So in this video, we'll just take a closer look at this thin client from Dell. This is the Dell Wise 5070. So we'll just go over the hardware and also get into the BIOS. And I bought actually two of these, already took a look at one of them, but I'm used of eBay. You can get them for a fairly good deal nowadays, but I definitely overpaid for both of these. Bought them from the same seller, but the model I have also have two network cards built in which is kind of rare for this model. So even though these 5070 extended are still pretty widely uh, available on eBay, it's definitely not easy to get one with two NICs built in. So like I said, I paid a little too much for these, but I really wanted the ones with the dual NICs built in. And this is what I got. I got two of them, like I said, exactly the same on both of them. So I got the power cable, brand new, sealed still. I got the little stand here as well in this original packaging. And of course, Power adapter, this is definitely overkill for my use case. I don't plan to plug a lot of things into this little system, but you could also uh, plug in a GPU inside the computer. And I believe some models actually came with a GPU built in, but this is a 130 watt, I believe. I don't even think I will see the 30 watt usage. So 100 watts too much for my use case. So I could maybe also get a little bit smaller power supply because this is definitely very big and also takes up a lot of space, especially if you have two of them. Or maybe you could even get a split cable or a Y cable so you could connect two computers to one power supply. Something I'm going to look into at least. But for now, this is definitely nice. But the models I got here at least are manufactured in the year 2021, which is very recent. I believe these models here actually came out in 2029. So that's, yeah, very recent. We are in 2023, of course, as of recording this video. So nicely wrapped inside a plastic bag here. So let's just get it out and have a closer look. First off, go over the hardware and just get into the bias afterwards. So let's just get it out and have a closer look at its overall condition. If it is the same condition as the first one I took a look at that I've already like opened, it was wrapped in exactly the same way. Pretty close to brand new, actually. The SSD in the other one have only wrapped been on for like 10 days. You see the condition there on the front panel. You get actually nice port layout on these systems here. I really like that. So you have two USB 2.0 on the front. One can also charge the, your phone, for instance, and you have a super speed USB on the front. So five gigabits per second, but you also have a USB type C that also supports display port, headphone and microphone out and headphone only as well. And of course, power button there, Dell logo, Wise 5070. You have some mounting holes here for the included stand. Nice little stand so you can stand it upright. Takes up a little less space on your desk or shelf or wherever you want to mount this. Downsides of these extended models is they do have an active fan. So having that little fan in there could potentially suck a little bit dust into the system. And when they're on 24 seven, every day of the year, it could of course need to be cleaned frequently. I'm not really sure how often they need cleaning it or actually how powerful the little fan is or how much dust will actually get in there. But of course, time will see. And on the back side, we have the money shot here because this one has the dual RJ45 NICs. These are real tech NICs. Unfortunately, one gig would have been nice to see Intel NICs because those works better or best with PFSense. But I'm going to try this one first and see if they will work properly with PFSense. If I have any issues, I have ordered like a dual NIC, one of those old server NICs from Supermicro very inexpensive and only sucks around 3.5 watt power. So that would bring the total up to less than 10 watts still. But with the dual NICs here on board, I found that the system idles at around five to six watt with dual NICs connected. So that's pretty decent. So we do have serial ports, two of them on the back. We do also have another headset port that also have microphone. We have a parallel port for those who still need or use parallel printers. So you could also use this for a little print server and so on. Quad USB 3 or 3.2 Gen 1 or whatever they're called now. So five gigabits per second. Nice to have a lot of those on the back here as well. So you can hook up hard drives and so on. And we have three display out, but the last display does not have audio. The two first one have, and those are display plus plus ports. So you can also adapt those pretty easily as well. And of course we do have power in here and there is also room for two antennas. If you have the models with Wi-Fi built in or you could just add your own Wi-Fi card. This one of course have the secondary NIC and that uses the second M.2 slot, which of course also could use a Wi-Fi card. So for this model here, you're not able to have both the second NIC and the Wi-Fi card, but I definitely want the second NIC much more than a 
Wi-Fi in a system like this. And then you have this small PCI Express expansion here as well, times four slot, PCI Express Gen 2. But we'll also open this up and have a closer look inside. On the bottom side, we do have some screws for mounting to a specific stand you can get from Dell, but I guess you could also just mount it to whatever you please. So that's kind of nice. We have nice rubber feet on the bottom as well, so it will stand steady on the table and there's no like ventilation on the underside, so you don't really need to be worried. You're kind of blocking anything on the bottom there. And then we have the little product information here, or a little pull tab you can pull out so you can get a little bit more information about the product, the model number, the input voltage, and yeah, this one is made in China and so on. So a little bit weird, they have the little card that you have to pull out, but still nicer than have those stuff printed onto the case itself. I really like this minimalistic design, it looks very nice. The model I have does come with the Pentium Silver. So this is the J5005, it's a small quad-core CPU, very power efficient, I believe it's 10 watt official thermal power design from Intel. So very efficient, of course not the most powerful CPU, but more than enough for a router and for my one gig connection here. Hopefully it will be plenty for PSNs. And then we have the included stand as well. Actually very nicely constructed. We have these metal mounting points here. So just put it inside the hole there and squeeze it in place. I'm not gonna do that right now because I need to take it off again to actually get into the system or more easily get into the system. But nicely that this is included as well. And also one of the reasons I wanted to pay a little bit extra because I want to keep them upright so they don't take up much space on my shelf. And you cannot really buy these separately, or at least I couldn't find any on eBay. So nice inclusion. I really like these small stands. So let's just get into this little machine. We do have one screw on the back, so very easy to get in, get in here. Of course, just untie that, like so. And then you need to move the top lid here towards the front. Can be a little hard to do because there's not really much to actually hold on to. But yeah, it can be kind of hard because there's no real place to like pull or hold your fingers. But yeah, that definitely did the trick. <laughs> Be a little bit careful there. So the outside, plastic, plastic, all the way around, but metal on the inside, very nicely constructed actually. And then we're inside here, and right at the bat, one of the things that surprised me with this one here, that I got, I got the one with 32 gigabyte of what I thought was built-in memory, or built-in storage, because you can get these with eMMC storage built into the motherboard, and I thought that was the same case with my specific unit here, but you can see, it actually does have an SSD, I'm not really sure if that is common or if this is just my unit because all of them I've seen online talk about this unit does have a eMMC built into the motherboard and you can actually see if you remove this little riser cable here or riser adapter and we will remove the SSD. This is a 32 gigabyte SSD from Apesa and see on the motherboard right down here near the M.2 slot. We do have a spot here for an embedded multimedia card but it's just not on mine. I'm not really sure if this is like a part constraint that under the like Corona days where it would be harder maybe to get some of those embedded modules compared to like a flash drive. I am not sure at all, but definitely it's not on mine. So instead have a 32 gigabyte SSD, which is both a good or a bad thing in my opinion, because I did actually plan to just run PSNs of the embedded memory because it uses just a little bit less power. But of course, SSD does have much better write performance or write endurance. So yeah, a little bit strange. Would have been nice to have that embedded 32 gigabyte and then just be able to supply my own SSD. But one of the good things actually about having that SSD built in is that it also comes with this riser or screw that you actually screw into the SSD. If there is no SSD inside this system, you would actually only have the screw point as you can see right there, but not the actual screw which raises the SSD a little bit further up. I'm not really sure you can get those screws separately, but it's a screw where you can actually screw another screw into, and that will just lift the SSD a little bit higher up. So it's both good and bad in my opinion. Definitely SSD is better endurance and faster, but that's the first time I've seen that. I'm not really sure if because it's a later revision, but anyways, you get an SSD, a pretty decent one from Apesa, 32 gigabyte. I've not been able to find or figure out how much right endurance these SSDs can actually handle, but the smart information of the other system I had, these SSDs has only been on for like 10 days. Not really sure if the seller has actually replaced the SSDs with these 32 gigabyte ones, or if these actually came with the device. There's no like Dell model numbers on here anywhere, but yeah, a little bit strange. But with that being said, inside here, we do have the second NIC over here in the M.2 slot, 
connected right there. That's kind of nice having that built in. 8 gigabytes of memory in my unit. I believe you can get up to 32 gigabyte working in this system. I tried a 16 gigabyte 3200 MHz kit, did not work at all. Definitely is a little picky on the memory type you plug in. Make sure they do not run 3200 out of the box. Most crucial memory stick will probably work in here. I believe because crucial don't set like the overclock XMP profile as the default one. Needs like, I believe it's 2133 or 2400 megahertz memory stick. So if they have the default SPD, should be fine enough. And you could like set get up to 32 gigabyte. Not really sure I'm gonna bother really. Well, I think it would be plenty for my use case, but definitely you could potentially upgrade. Just do a little bit of research before you actually go out and get the memory modules. And then of course we have that little fan very silent fan. I can only really hear it when I have my ears right up next to that fan. So that's definitely nice. But other downsides is, of course, a moving part could potentially fail at some point, but also the fact that it can pull a little bit of dust into the system and you need to, to clean it more regularly, especially if you keep it on the floor or some place where there's a lot of dust. Could potentially be an issue long term. Of course, I need to do some more testing, but man, this whole system just looks so clean. Not really sure if the seller have actually cleaned it, but man, looks shiny, almost like brand new. So over here, we have the speaker as well, but it's a stereo speaker. I don't know if you can actually see, but there is two drivers in there. Very, very loud. I kind of got a shock first time I tried to install. PFSense, when you log in, you get kind of this audio prompt, PCI Express times four slot. This is PCI Express Gen 2. So times four, that is two gigabytes per second and 16 megabits per second. So you can theoretically get at least one 10 gig throughput uh, from this times four slot. So you can get very fast NICs on here as well if you are planning to go down that route or you could just install a SSD, NVMe SSD in there. I have that in my other system or a graphics card as well. And of course you do get the riser cable included or riser adapter rather included. So you could mount it in this orientation. Just make sure you only really get small form factor graphics card or network card in here. It does not support full height, only half height cards. That's one thing to note of, but man, it's so nice to have that upgrade ability. So for me, for instance, wanting to run a web server, I can just run the OS off of the little 32 gigabyte SSD and then throw an NVMe SSD in here for the actual website and container and so on. Very nice to be able to upgrade like that. And this is how the little riser card looks like. All of this seem to be very high quality, also relatively expensive system when it was brand new, nice metal and don't need any tools to actually remove it. Just plug it in or plug it out like this. Very easy to do. Do also have a USB header here. I believe one USB 3 and one USB 2 throughput through this one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have not really investigated, but I believe that's what I read online. Other people tried. You also have a jumper one here if you want to clear CMOS or clear the BIOS. Nice to have that if you mess up something. Other than that, you of course have the parallel and serial port. You could detach that or those to the motherboard. I could try to do so just to see if it will save a little bit of power or energy. And I didn't really notice any difference whether it was connected or not connected. So I'm just going to leave them in. But you could also just completely remove that if you don't need it. So let's just try and plug everything in here. See what's actually installed in that little SSD. See the fan there start spinning immediately. You boot up the system. It goes at full speed, but it will slow down pretty fast. But yeah, when you plug in the power, the little fan goes on, but the actual system is not on yet. I have reattached the SSD. There's actually a little status LED on the SSD, which is kind of odd, I think. Maybe that's a professional feature, not something you see in consumer grade SSDs that often. But anyways, you can also monitor the power here, the wattage it uses right now around the six wattage. So let's try and turn this little machine on and see what's on that little SSD. So we do have something already installed and you get a little bit of information here about the system. There's a new BIOS out, so let's just try and update the BIOS. So this is the thin OS 9.1, so on and so on. I'm not really familiar with thin OS at all. Yeah, this is the little light operating system that's on and you can probably connect to a server and use this, of course, as a thin client. But you can see the power draw there just around the five watt or so. But let's just update the BIOS. I already have the BIOS on here, the latest and greatest. To update the BIOS, first off, plug in the little USB adapter with the BIOS inside. It's an exe file and of course, turn on your computer and then just hammer the F12 keys on your, on your keyboard. And that should take you to the boot menu. And once you're in the boot menu here, you can just go down and select BIOS flash update and hit enter. 
And then of course you need to select the BIOS latest as of this video is 1.22. And it's an exe file, which is kind of weird for a BIOS when you update it this way here. Usually an exe file is updating through Windows, but anyways, this will work. I tried it on the other system as well. Then just begin flash update and you should not turn off the computer and so on and so on and so on. Don't interrupt the BIOS update, just let it run until it's completely done. And it will also reboot maybe a few times. Let it run until it's completely done. And that should update the BIOS hopefully and be up to the latest and greatest. And that's always a good thing to do. According to Dell's website, this is a critical update. So make sure you update this critical update. Definitely a good idea. And you can see a little progress bar there. Once of course you're up to 100, you are done updating the BIOS. And after that, we'll just go into the BIOS and have a closer look at all of the settings. It is a pretty extensive BIOS, nicely looking BIOS, but a little bit actually annoyed, annoying to use. You kind of need a mouse or it is easier to use with a mouse rather. But anyways, let's just let this one complete. And you can see it is up to like the 11 watt now when it's doing something. So now the BIOS is updated. Let's just get into the BIOS and look at the settings. And need to hit F2 with the boot up screen here to actually get into the BIOS. It is a rather complicated BIOS, or at least there's a lot of settings and it's nicely looking BIOS. You can also use your mouse in here, but I definitely like those more basic BIOS layout, but you can also use a keyboard and you can get into pretty much all settings with your keyboard, but you pretty much need to use tab to actually get in and switch between one window to the other window. So if you're on the left pane like right now, you need to click tab to get over to secure boot. You need to disable it, for instance, hit enter, hit enter again, and then you need to use tab three times to actually get back to the left pane there. If you wanna use keyboard alone, but you can also, of course, use the mouse. That makes it a lot easier, but let's just get into all the settings here. First, we have general. So we have system information, that's the first tab. Of course, get a lot of information of the system, the BIOS version, memory installed, so on. Boot sequence is here where you can actually set which device to boot from or which OS also. You can see the thing OS is the top one here, you can change priority. Just click on one of them and move it down or move it up. And of course, if you have something else installed like Windows or PFSense and so on, you can just move that up to the top. Or if you want to boot from a USB device, you can also add another option here as well. UFE boot path security. I just keep mine at always. Date and time, of course, where you set date and time. System configuration, you have the UFE network stack. Let's just enable that. You have HTG boot, integrated NIC, of course, this is the onboard NIC on the motherboard. Second NIC here, I have in mine as well. Enable that. You can also get an SFP version of that second NIC. Both uses Realtek. You can enable or disable the parallel and serial port. Select what kind of operation you need to use for the internal SATA drive. Select what drives you have here. We, of course, only have the one drive in here right now. Enable smart reporting. I'll just enable that. Kind of nice to have. So you know if the drive is failing. And also, if you want to boot from USB, this is where you do that. Under USB configuration, enable USB boot support. It was default in my BIOS, but I believe some BIOS versions, you need to go in and set that. And also, if there is a password on the BIOS, it usually fire port, but on my BIOS, no password. So that's kind of nice. You can also enable and disable the USB plugs. Select if you want to have the power share on the front USB port there. Not actually sure if you will save a little bit of power disabling that. Could be also audio. If you want to enable or disable that, you can do so here. Video, of course, you do have that little built-in GPU, but it's just set to auto. So if you install a secondary graphics card, it will automatically switch to that. And security, you can set an admin password, system password. You can also set a hard drive password, strong password, enable that. Password configuration. You can bypass password, password change. A lot of password stuff here. Enable UEFI capsule firmware update. There's also a TPM module. I'm not sure if it's actually a hardware module on the motherboard or if it's just inside the CPU. But TPM is definitely nice to have, especially if you want to install Windows 11. And also for security reasons, the, the chassis intrusion, admin setup logout, master password logout, SMM security migration, password jumper. Then we have the secure boot there. Definitely go and disable that if you want to install anything other than Windows. Good thing to disable that. Secure bit mode here. Expert key management. A lot of settings here. Intel SGX enable. I'm not really sure what that is. Clave memory size. Performance multi-core support. Of course, you want to enable that. Speed step. Enable that as well. So you can kind of lower the clock frequency. C state. Also a nice thing to enable. Intel turbo boost. So it will... Overclocked a little CPU, I believe it's 
2.8 GHz Turbo Boost on this CPU and 1.5 GHz base clock frequency. Power management, AC recovery, set this one to on if you want to use it as a PF sense box, so it will automatically switch on whenever you lose power and the power will come back on. It will automatically turn on the system because of course you want your firewall to be on all the time. Deep slick control, I've disabled that, but of course you could, could enable it and it will get into a deeper sleep mode. Fan override, if you want to run the little fan at 100% all the time, you can of course enable that here. USB wake support, nice to have, wake on LAN. Also enable that here on both the built-in NICs, which is kind of nice. Block sleep, not sure what that is. Then we have post behavior, adapter warnings, numlock LEDs, keyboard errors, fast boot, extended, BIOS post time, full screen logo. Then you have virtualization support. So enable, disable virtualization. Wireless, of course we do not have any wireless devices in this system here. And then you have maintenance, service tag, and so on and so on. And you can actually also downgrade the BIOS. If you have some issues with the latest and greatest BIOS, downgrade it. It's a nice option to have. You can also wipe data of the SSD and you can also go for into BIOS recovery. And last but not least, we do have BIOS events. So system lock here and alert whenever the cover is pulled off the system. <laughs> nice little add-on because you also have the little padlock security hole back there so you can actually lock it in place so you know if it's been tampered with or not. So a pretty extensive BIOS can be a little overwhelming but just make sure you enable USB boot, disable secure boot and also enable so it will turn off if the power fails it will always come back on. You can also save this as a custom user setting I'm not really gonna do this, but it's kind of nice. You can do so. And you can also restore settings. So a pretty comprehensive little system. Really enjoyed working on it. I think the construction is nice. I also feel this is a better system than those Chinese computers, even though there are definitely some nice computers you can get off AliExpress. Completely passively cool, 365 days a year. This one is going to be on. Just more confidence in Dell's hardware capabilities than like some unbranded Chinese computer. It's a little bit of a bummer that the extended model does have a built-in fan. Well, does the bigger model need a fan, but the smaller model does not. It's a little bit strange to me, but that's also probably mean that a little CPU can actually boot a little bit longer and stays cooler. It definitely is very cool. I've not changed the thermal compound on this, the other system I have, and I've not really seen it go much above like 50 degrees Celsius. Definitely cool enough. So this has just been a Hardware overlook, bias look at the Dell Wise 5070 extended. Definitely a little system I can recommend. You probably need to pay a little bit more for the extended version compared to the non extended version. There are a lot more of those online on eBay. In Europe, where I live, there are not really any extended models for sale, so I had to kind of import this. So I paid through the nose to actually get these. But considering they have the like two NICs built in, that I hope will be sufficient for PF Sense. Of course, I had to run a lot of testing. Plan to run PF Sense Plus. Maybe that's a little bit better with Realtek drivers. But other than that, I definitely recommend these small systems. Super nice to work on and relatively quiet. Doesn't really use much power. And for something you need to have running 24 seven, at least I do here. For my specific setup for a web server and a firewall, you shouldn't really go down in terms of quality. So like I said, those Chinese computers, I'm sure they're fine enough. I just don't feel comfortable leaving something like that on in my system on my house for 24 seven nonstop. So yeah, highly recommend them. Of course, I can share some links to eBay listings down in the description below if you're interested. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.